The Central Bank of Nigeria has increased interventions in the foreign exchange market through Nigeria's external reserves, which depreciated by $866.2 million, or 2.26% in October 2022. Well, um, $237.39 billion from $38.25 billion it opened in a month on the review. In 10 months, the nation's foreign exchange buffers has depreciated by 7.73% as at October 31st, 2022. Analysts attribute the decline in external reserves to increasing interventions by policies of the Apex Bank, lamenting the dwindling inflows from crude oil, amongst others. And about a year ago, Nigeria introduced the digital version of its official currency, the e Naira. The introduction of the e Naira was partly in response to concerns that the rising popularity of crypto in the country was threatening the banking system. Earlier today on TVC News' flagship business program, Business Nigeria, the president of the Association of Capital Market Academics of Nigeria, Adas Akman, Professor Ucho Waleke, spoke with me about the performance of the e-Naira one year after. The last one year, uh, according to the Central Bank, uh, 700,000 transactions have valued at 8 billion Naira. Uh, Central Bank also says it has minted 3 billion Naira worth of um, uh, in Naira and issued 2.1 billion to, um, to commercial banks. Um, and more important, uh, it has onboarded 1 million customers and over 3,000 merchants. Okay, so I think that's, um, as I said, remarkable achievement for a first time CD this mover. This is something you expect from maybe a last mover or somebody that um, is not a first timer. But this is a uh, uh, first country, you know, doing it um, in Africa. And um, just in the, in the last one year, uh, this much has been achieved. I think. Um, it speaks to the potentials that uh, the Inera, uh, you know, has. Ucho Uwaleke there earlier today on Business Nigeria. Now, the high cost of Forex at the parallel market is adversely affecting the business of companies and other manufacturers in the country. But that's according to the Chief Executive Officer of Cortex PLC, Mrs. Ijoma Odonye, who disclosed this at a press conference to mark the company's anniversary celebrations. Wakelia Giga was there. The successful, indigenously promoted company, while flagging off activities to mark its 40th anniversary celebration, reveals a theme tagged 40 years of striving for a commonwealth. And CEO of the company lists some challenges affecting the industrial cable and wires manufacturer, including unstable government policies and multiple taxations, amongst others. Curtis PLC, known for the exclusive quality of her cables and wires have continued to blaze a trail in the manufacturing sector amidst While commenting on the company's the historic anniversary, the CEO recalled how the idea for the company was conceived in 1981 by the founder, engineer Dr. Gilbert Uzodike. I'm not happy that we've just set up critics and I'm trying to set a technology and innovation hub at Newi so that we will have more critics incubate them, but for young men like you to take over. My only problem is I can't find the young men, the brick and mortar things that eventually make a country. You know, who is, which is the biggest country in the world now, China. Another development, the company also takes the market through a fact behind the figures presentation. And the CEO says the company has braved all odds to add tremendous value to a commonwealth pool shared by all stakeholders of Kutix. Kutix PLC has become one of the top providers of electrical energy products and services in Nigeria, consistently providing Nigerians with the right solution for power and control. As they celebrate 40 years of excellence, the exchange commemorates with them and we would like to recognize the efforts being made by the board and management of Kutis PLC towards achieving continuity by improving business operations and maintaining investors' confidence in the company. Our projection is to make a minimum of 30% increase in revenue, minimum. And that gives us the figures we have here. We look forward to ending this year with 12 billion Naira revenue. 
it will be recalled that in 2008, the company organically migrated to the main board of the NGX first tier securities market and currently has about 8,495 shareholders. Kelly Agiga, TVC News, Lagos. Well, tax dialogues would provide a platform for exchange of diverse ideas on taxation have been described as a tool for engendering tax compliance through collective ownership of the tax system, as well as a means to strengthen tax system. Speaking at the 2022 Kaduna State Tax Dialogue held in Kaduna State, the chairman of the Federal Inland Revenue Service, Mr. Mohamed Nabi, reveals that dialoguing on tax was very necessary for inclusivity, fairness, and pooling experts' ideas to aid ta tax policy formulation, which ultimately strengthens tax administration. Mr. Nami explained that for the government to provide public goods for citizens, Nigerians have a duty to provide government with the needed resources uh, and has to do so by paying their taxes. The FRS boss also notes that in his address, that two key drivers of voluntary tax compliance are effective communication and trust, and tax authorities must develop effective tax communication strategies while government at all levels must ensure taxpayers receive value for taxes paid. The success of Nigeria's 2023 budget depends on extensive fiscal and monetary measures to address the wide gap between Nigeria's declining revenue and productivity levels and its ballooning expenditure. The position is shared by tax professionals who disclose it at a gathering in Lagos. We have details in this report. A gathering of tax, economic and financial experts. They are here to, among other things, take a casual look at Nigeria's economy and the 2023 budget, as well as how issues around the deficit and declining revenue can be addressed. President of the CITN, alongside the new chairman of Lagos and District Society, express mixed reactions. Looking at a budget that is premised on speculation, which has to do with the fact that we are projecting. And when we put this vis-a-vis -vis what we are talking about in terms of trade policy, in terms of fiscal policy, and our monetary policy, we are equally challenged. It's um, imperative that we start talking tax. It's important because both of that one point something trillion from the nine that is going to be generated internally is going to be generated from non um, oil revenue. So if out of nine, 1.7 or thereabouts is coming from non-oil revenue. That means a huge chunk of what the government is expecting to generate next year is coming from non-tax. For the 18th chairman of the CITN, Lagos and District Society, Mrs. Zainab Abdul Karim, the realization of the key objectives and headline figures of the budget is to improve revenue drive. We have a culture and it's a rich one but will allow for innovation and creativity in our programs. The core um, mandate of CITN is to ensure the continuous training of people or those who want to be tax pra practitioners in Nigeria. So what we're going to be doing is ensuring and using all avenues, ICT and uh, all avenues um, available to ensure their continuous training. And as the district begins a new tenor with Mrs. Adul Karim as chairman, it is expected that more engagement with government and stakeholders will serve as catalysts for revenue generation in the country.